What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to show you how you can self-mount your own clerk components. So that means your users don't have to go to the hosted version of clerk to sign in and then get redirected back to your application. You can keep it all inside making it really really easy to control everything in your ecosystem. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the next year starter blog and hide that behind the clerk sign up and sign in pages so you actually have to sign in to see them. Once the user signed in it will just work normally as the Next.js blog starter does but it will give you a good understanding how to self mount those components and get working with clerk. So if you're interested in that stick around as we start learning. So here we are in the Next.js starter blog. Now this is a really basic implementation of Next.js with markdown files as a blog. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to implement the clerk sign in using self-mounted components, aka keeping it all inside this application. And we're going to stop users from even being able to see the blog unless they're signed up slash signed in to our application. So the first thing we need to do is actually add the package here. And once we've added the package, we'll be able to use the self mounting components. So to add that package, just do yarn add, and then it's at clerk, clerk react, and just hit enter, and it will go and get those packages. And then we're ready to get going. So now we have that we can clear out and we can go into our app.js and this is where all of our sort of handling of redirect to sign in is going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to import some of this clerk functionality. So we need the clerk provider and that's what we're going to wrap all of our components in. We're going to have a redirect to sign in and then we're going to have signed in and signed out. Now those are just condition booleans that tell you whether you're signed in or signed out. And those are gonna come from the clerk react. While we're also here, we're gonna import uh, use router from react, I mean from next router. And then we're gonna import use effect and that's gonna come from our react package. Let's go ahead and hit save here. So now we have all of this. What we're going to do first is we're going to tell it what our front end API is going to be. And I'm going to show you in the video further on where you can get that from. Um, I already have it in this application, but I'll show you where to get it from. So it's clerk front end API, or you can call it whatever you want. And we're just going to process this from dot in files. And it's going to be uh, next score public underscore clerk score front end API and then we're going to tell it which pages we are going to allow the user to see without being signed in so if you have a full-blown application for example and you wanted just to show the landing page and then the sign-in pages this is how you would handle it so for us, we're just going to list just the sign in page and the sign out page, um, sign up page as those being available to the public. So to do that, we can make a const here called public pages. And we're going to set that to an array. And inside of that array, we're going to have our first URL as sign in slash. And then we're going to open two square sets of brackets here and do dot 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 index and then we're going to do another comma here and we're going to do another one and we'll just do slash sign dash up and we're going to have the same process now this means that we can handle essentially any url that comes after the sign up part or the sign in part so for example if they're using sso which is the um using like google auth for example which is an sso uh that will redirect to something like uh localhost 3000 slash sign dash up slash 
OAuth callback or something like that. And we want to be able to handle that and anything else. So that's how you would handle that. So now we have that, we have this. So let's not make it a default. We'll do that afterwards. Let's do a function here and we'll call it my app. And inside of this, we're going to use the router. So router equals use router. And now we have access to the router. And now we can do our conditional rendering here. So let's just delete the return here, but we'll keep this because we want to be able to use it and copy and paste is easier than remembering it. So we're going to do clerk provider and then the front end API is going to equal the clerk front end API that we declared at the top. And then we're going to say navigate equal and then two and then router dot push and then again two and this gives us the ability now to wrap any components in this clerk provider and handle whether we're signing in or signing out so what we can do now is do some conditional rendering so we can say public pages dot includes and then router dot path name and then if it does, we can just return this part here. So let's copy that and drop it here. Otherwise, we need to know whether they're signed in or signed out. So let's just make a fragment here because we're gonna have two different options. So if they're signed in, we can just do the same thing again. So we can re render the component. Otherwise, if they're not, and they're signed out, we can redirect to, to sign in. And then that will handle everything that we need. And then we just need to make sure everything's closed out, so. We need one more, or we need to move this to here. And just like that, now we have the ability to handle if we uh, are using either the public pages, AKA the sign in page, or we're rendering the other pages here. And then we just need to make sure that we export default the. Uh, my app and now all we need to do is to build out these sign-in pages that we've described here and the sign-up page we've described here and we also need to create the page for user profiles so to do that you just create a new folder in your pages and we do exactly uh, what you expect here we create a folder called the version that we have here so signed in and then inside of that file we also do two square brackets dot 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 index close them out and hit dot js and then inside of this signed in file what we can do is create the page essentially telling it which component to use from clerk and how to handle it so we just do an import at the top and say signed in from and then at clerk react. And then we just need to export default function and sign in page. We don't need to take any arguments in and then we just return the sign in page and we tell it the path. So equal to, and then the path that we're in right now, which is slash sign in. And then the routing equal to path. And then that's our signing page complete. And that's all we need to do because Clerk is going to handle the UI for us. So we don't actually have to worry about that. We just have to worry about asking for the correct component. And then we can do the same thing again here. So two square brackets, index dot, dot js. And then we're going to do very similar here. 
So we can actually copy this to save a little time, change this to sign up, change this to sign up, change this to sign up page, and then we change this to sign up. And now that matches what's in here. Sign in, sign up, sign in, sign up. And then we just need one more page here. And that page is going to be our user. So we can just do user. And then inside of this user is their robust user profile. So to do that, we can do another new file, another set of squares, and do index.js. And then inside of this user one, all we're going to do is import their user profile. And that's going to come from Clerk React. And we'll do export default function user profile page. And we'll set that equal to return user profile. The path will be equal to slash user. And then the routing equal to path. And we can hit save. And now everything is ready to go from the application standpoint. So the last thing we need to do is actually go to the clerk dashboard and make a couple changes and find our front end API key so we know exactly what we can do with it so that we can actually self mount these components. So I'll meet you over on the clerk dashboard. So we're inside of Clerk's Dev's dashboard under our development account here. So first thing is you need to grab this front end API key and put that in your .env as that next public front end API key. So take that, copy it, drop it in there. And then the last parts that you need to do too is go to your settings here and go to URL and redirects and make sure that your component URLs are set to the localhost 3000 sign up sign in and user and then anything after that obviously you need to just handle if you've got redirects if you need them to go to a specific place but we don't need to as part of our process here so now we should be good to go and should be able to test our application and make it work the way we expect it so i'll meet you back on the website afterwards and see how it's working and make sure that we are protected from outside sources okay so we launched the application and here we are youtube test app in our bright pink colors so i'm going to sign in with single sign on using my account and make sure that we get redirected back to localhost 3000 and now you can see we're in the blog and i can go ahead and read all these pages if i so wish and if i need to look at my user profile i can just go to slash user and that will give me my profile information, photo, email address, connected accounts, first and last name, etc., and where I'm logged in from. And then if we redirect back to 3000, we are here. So the sign in, sign up, and everything is self-mounted and ready to go. So that's the end of this tutorial. Pretty interesting stuff from clerk.dev, giving you the ability to self-mount inside your application, making people think more secure, than if they are being redirected to another site. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure that you're subscribed for more content around Next.js and make sure you drop it a like and a comment so I know that you're enjoying this material. Until next time, see ya.